other interesting business news and incidentally automotive news, Lamborghini sold a record number of vehicles in 2023. Though, granted I've never bought one since they're all automatic transmissions. Nevertheless, this comes from Mike Duff over at Car and Driver, and they noted that they actually broke the 10,000 vehicle barrier. Now, it looks like they sold 10,112 gar- cars globally in 2023, with 3,000 units sold in the U.S. and the Euros SUV, making up the majority of deliveries, which, yeah, I don't know how disappointing that is. It's Perhaps I'm just an old purist when it comes to certain automotive brands and history and heritage, but I understand the one of the biggest growing categories in the Volvo community for well over a decade is the SUV in the crossover category, which is why pretty much every legacy, premium, luxury, and performance automotive company now has some type of option. Now granted, if I had all the money in the world and I was forced to get an SUV, truth be told, I would love to have a Lamborghini, what is it, Cayenne with a stick shift, which they only made for a couple of years, I think it was a 2007, 2008. They had a couple years where you could get a V8 stick shift SUV by Porsche, which that would be pretty cool. Now, unfortunately, because of supply and demand, the only ones that are usually around for sale, and granted, they usually don't come up for sale, they over well over 100,000 miles. They're asking what to me would be a lot of money. So you're, I mean, 30, 40, 50 grand for an SUV from about 20 years ago. But nevertheless, it looks like Lamborghini is doing pretty well, and the Urus is their big fancy SUV. Now, I'm, granted, I think it only has a V8, which is kind of pathetic. Again, Lamborghini is known for having V12s and some V10s. Now, it looks like they know that the Urus made up more than 6,000 of the deliveries. Jeez Louise. So, of the 10,112 vehicles sold by Lamborghini, over 6,000 were the SUVs. Which is insane and this is the first time they've broken that type of number of units being sold in over 60 years that they've been in business now they've also been owned by a myriad of people since mr lamborghini actually founded the company way back in the day and let's see here in terms of the breakdown of where those suvs are going it looks like 3,000 went to the united states in terms of the euros 357 went to canada Looks like Germany was the second biggest market. It was 961 of the SUVs. China got 845, and the UK got 801. They also know that despite being Lamborghini's home market, Italy just languished down in the eighth place behind South Korea with just 409 vehicles being delivered. Now, they also noted, well, that's because the government doesn't like you there. It's due to the high ownership taxes leveled on expensive high-performance cars vehicles. Sorry. Kind of sad and ironic. It makes them the most amazing almost feats on the planet, and yet those countries don't want their own people to have it. Yet the government profits from it because they manufacture it, they tax the hell out of it. But nevertheless, now they also note that the new record is made even more impressive by the fact that it came in time when Lamborghini only had two models of full production. The Urus SUV made up getting up a majority of the sales. With so it looks like specifically it was six thousand and eighty-seven vehicles sold were the Urus, and the other. Other model is only the Huracan, which is the fun you know, car, although you can debate how much fun it really is because it only has two pedals. It's automatic. And that came in at 3,962 vehicles. They also know that the other 63 deliveries may be made up by the last Aventadors as the Venerable Superbar was, group, Supercar was briefly put back into production after several years. We're lost. Oh, yeah, because they're lost in transportation fire, ship fire. The total also includes some limited-run V12-powered specials, including... Probably the 112 Countach LP 800-4 models. Which, again, every Lamborghini by default, in my opinion, should have a V12. I mean, it just it just should. And obviously a stick shift, but granted I'm not in charge of Volkswagen, which is the parent company that owns Lamborghini at this current time. I say that at the current time because they've been bought and sold many times, including when Chrysler actually owned them back when Chrysler was a big, successful company. But... It'll be interesting to see as Lamborghini continues to increase their global sales. Looks like they're going to have more plug-in hybrids coming up in the future. Which, it looks like some of them will have the V12, but with a hybrid. I hope they have some type of simple fuse where, similar to some vehicles, where they have that BS cylinder deactivation, which is good for the fuel economy, bad for the liability and longevity of your vehicle. So it's really just to make the government happy and the EPA happy. In some vehicles, you can just simply take out a fuse, apparently, allegedly. And that way you don't have to deal with that and press that button every time you hit in the vehicle. Yeah. 
I was going to say, I may or may not have done that when I had a corporate car back in the day. And I had to use one of those things every time. So, again, it'll be interesting. It is fascinating to see Lamborghini pass that big historic mark in terms of units sold. And, you know, to the purest me, it is a little sad that, again, it is an SUV and not the iconic Lamborghini you know, sports car. But I also know there's a huge part of the market. They're not alone in this in terms of, I know Porsche, one of the biggest sellers is the Cayenne SUV. And you see this with multiple other vehicles. So not too surprised. It'll be interesting to see how much they can grow that specific brand in the Volkswagen portfolio. And I don't know. To me, if I wanted to get the, let's see. If I had to get a Lamborghini SUV, I'd probably get the vintage. Well, I say vintage. I think it came out when I was a kid. The LM002, which actually is ridiculously huge. It has a V12. I believe it still has a stick shift as well. And Doug Miro has a great video where he breaks down that SUV. But if I had to get a Lamborghini SUV, that, that would probably be the vintage one. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time to tune in today. Again, I'm trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of January. So if you click that button, I'd greatly appreciate it. Also, leave me a comment, a thumbs up or thumbs down appropriately. It will give me some additional feedback on how I can make the show better and better. Also, and lastly, don't forget to take time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe and fight the good fight.